All right, I'm just going to do another video real quick here. I mentioned that I uh, made my center of my body out of the stove, out of the flag poles. So I'm going to show you just real quick some of the stuff I do to make the uh, flag poles. Um, this gets a little uneven when you cut it. I like to cut off about an inch, and I never actually measure it. I just kind of guess. So first things first, I cut simplest part, uh, get the piece cut off, then I take and I put that piece inside of a disc holder. This holds the disc for a drill. It's actually a reverse thread, so I know it looks like I'm screwing it on, but it's actually uh, being screwed off. This is the perfect size for this particular pipe. I put it down inside here like this. Oh, look at that. I almost cut this one too long. Yeah, I did. I might have to cut a little off that because won't, I won't be able to thread it otherwise. So let me cut a little more off, and I'll get right back to you. All right, so I'm going to cut a little more off. That wasn't the easiest thing in the world. I don't, it's hard to hold something like that. So, But I got it done without killing myself. So now I was going to show you how I did the uh, fine-tuning on this piece to make it work with my little stove. So the next thing I do is I slap it inside this uh, disc sanding wheel that I have. And it's reverse thread, so it doesn't let it come undone while I'm using it on the drill bit there. I just screwed on like that. And then I'm going to flip the camera around here and show you where I go on the other side here. Just a second. Hold on. I bring it back over here to my uh, drill press, which I need the uh, chuck for. And I don't see out right now. So I'm not going to be able to do this without chuck. Just a second. Let me find my chuck. All right. I'm going to turn the light over just a little more so you can see a little more over here. Get some more light on the subject. And let me, I found my chuck here. I drill out. I always put it back in the case. You'll never find it again when you need it. Slide this up into my uh, chuck and give it a tightening spin. And then I make sure I lock it because I don't want it jumping out on me while I'm sanding it. And that's all I'm going to do this first round is just sand it. And then I take myself a strip of uh, 60 grit sandpaper. Uh, <coughs> 3M Pro Grade, not really sure what that's good for. Then I flip this on. And this is just taking it, I'm a little loose there. That's alright, just gotta keep it spinning. This takes off any Mars that were on there and roughens it up a little bit. And just gets rid of any of the uh, Mars that were in the original metal that might have occurred. And I just about got it there. That should be good. Then I grab a little, uh, I think it's 100 grit. Uh, 100 grit. I know that's a big jump, but that's where I go next. I just hit it a few times with that. Get it down nice and smooth a little more. Then I grab uh, some 220 here. Which I don't have a piece of cut. The last one I did snap on me. Flipped after I cut it. So I just cut a little piece of 220 grit. And this is uh, the black sandpaper. Now you run that up and down there. Oops. Get away from me. This paper is not near as strong as the other two, so it tends to tear real quick when you're using it. And the last time I just use my finger and hold on to this while I'm doing this, you can see it taking it off a little by little. Try and get down in that groove and up the top one. Kind of like putting on a sanding wheel, I guess. Uh, lastly, I'll use, uh, well, I don't see it. I'll use a 400 grit, which is not out here right now. I'm going to grab some of it back. Sorry, I had lost my 400 grit sandpaper. I don't have a lot of it lost. I need to go out and get some more. It tears about every time you use it anyway, so that's 400 grit sandpaper. And boy, it doesn't make any noise because it isn't doing much. Just fine tuning it a little bit. I bought this stuff when I was working on my son's Pinewood Derby car. We uh, went down all the way to 400 grit when we were doing the axle. After I do 400 grit, what I like to do. I have this uh, Never Doll stuff. 
I just grabbed a little piece of it, it's like a fuzz out of the can there. And I just rub it under my hand a little bit. It's like a wax, I guess. I'm not really sure exactly what it does. It's like a buffing to me. So what it does, it just shines it up a little bit. Yeah, I lost it. Okay, I had enough on that. And I take this uh, cotton pad here, I kind of just buff, buff it out one last time. And you can't see yourself in them. But it makes them a little shiny. Now I've laid my chuck down. And I don't know where I laid it down. I thought when I chucked down, I started putting it back in the uh, chuck holder. On the side. That's where I think I'll put it now. So you take this out, and you just unspin that screw there. It usually isn't that tight, so it doesn't matter. Take the whole thing off. I'm going to lose it. Oh well. Get in a second. And that would be our center tube now. All shined up. Where it originally looked like that. Now it looks like that. I can't... Let's see if you can see that. I'm sorry. Doesn't look that much different. Actually, the one looks shinier than the other on the camera, I think. But that's what they look like. They're all shined up. Uh, now what I'll do is... I don't know if you can tell. This is not uh, straight here. Now I'll take a piece of sandpaper. Starting with the 60 grit and start smoothing that out this way, making sure it's nice and flat once I get it all flat this way I've got to drill the, uh, tap the hole in it for the uh, nipple um, on the side of it alright, I'm going to set up on my vise here i got to flip it over first makes it easier to work on it when I'm uh, I don't tend to work on it this way on the side there a little bit like this if I can get it there, nice and smooth. Right there. Not the easiest place to lock it down like this, but it works. Before I lock it all the way down, I just polished the whole thing. I should have tapped it before I did that. I'm going to grab some of these rubber feet off of the um, cl clamp I had a minute ago and put them on this to keep from scratching up, marring up my surface. That'll hold it nice and tight while I tap a hole right in here. Uh, this would be the bottom and that would be the top. So let me get my drill set up and we'll show you that. And also let me try and readjust the camera before we start. Alright, so I've got my drill here. <coughs> <laughs> the two drill bits that I'll be using. Um, I'd use a, well, let me see on what size this is. My size of the chart. I need to just lay it up against it. This is a 5 30 seconds bit. And this is a tap. And it is a M5 times 0.80. So that's what the, uh, the tap that I'll use for the uh, <clears throat> nipples that Tate sells on his website. Get my drill bit. Set. I like to drill a pilot hole first just to keep myself from slipping up. And I think on this one I'm going to move it up just a hair from the last one. Okay, that's through. That's the hard part. Actually, that's the easy part, I should say. This is the hard part here. You put on your tap now. And you can't go real fast with this, so you definitely need a variable speed drill. You need to be able to go real slow, and you need to be able to go in reverse, too, which I think all drills have that. <coughs> Once you get into the hole, which doesn't take very long since I did a pilot hole, um, these threads cannot go faster than you're going up and down, or you'll actually strip it out. So... I'm going to place this in here. It'd be very straight. You can't bend side to side. And you can't pull it up 
too fast either because it has to thread itself back out. So then I like to look at it, and then what I'll do is I'll grab a nipple here real quick. Be right back. So I have a nipple here, this particular nipple, which you probably won't be able to see from the camera very well, is a microline nipple. I happened to buy I happened to buy two of those, or four of them I should say, in my last batch. I like to just test it, make sure that it fits. I drilled the right hole and everything before I get too much trouble with it. And it is the correct size and it's all fitting nice and smooth. No reason to tighten it up though, because if I were to just put it in there just like that, it wouldn't work. Um you have to put an o-ring gasket on there to keep it from leaking and this surface is rounded as with any cylinder and if I just screwed it down the two edges would be lower than the tops so I have to flatten it off. I think uh, Tenny uses a mill to do that. Well I don't have a mill so I use a uh, file. I'll show you that. Let me get a file. Now one of the things that I will do here is I will try and tape off the parts that don't need to be filed simply because with the file I tend to slip a little bit so I don't want to slip and I also want to get, keep a straight line so let me get my o-ring out here I need to see how big my o-ring is so that I cover the whole space and sometimes I'll snip the top and bottom of the o-ring off to make it square with the um, top and bottom of the cylinder otherwise it's a uh, lot of filing to do because that o-ring I have is pretty big there uh, I've used smaller o-rings but that just happened to be when I found it at the hardware store so I want the same amount above as below. And these are just guidelines for me, really. They're not going to stop the file from doing anything. Uh, the hardest part here is to try and stay level. If I start to tilt or rock, it's not going to work. So I have to get down level with this myself on my hands and knees here. And usually I like to have a hand around back. So I'm actually going to move the camera because one of the seats right in my way here. So hold on just a second. Let's see, can you guys see from there? I think you can. It's my mess down here. Sorry about that. All right, that gives me a, a elbow space and a front and back, so now I can um, get here and do some filing. Oops, see, I told you it's just a guideline. Yeah, I'm already higher than I should be, but not much I can do about that now. It's up there. I need to build little blocks to go in here so I don't go too far that way or too far this way. Usually the part going to the bottom is not a big deal. It's the part going to the top that looks bad when you get up too far to the top. That's about done there. I need to get the top leveled off here. And I might as well go to the point where I've hit it already. Of course, that'll probably cause me to push it up further. Not quite. Almost. <laughs> Looks pretty good. So then I will take and uh, what happens is you're messing with the threads a little bit as you do that. So you have to re-thread it. Make sure you didn't mess up any of your threads. And if you did, you may have to run the tap through there by hand. No, it looks like it's still good. And it's got some tent tightness to it. Uh, this is not very thick aluminum, so there's not a lot of room to play with. we got a flat surface, so now what we'll do is we'll... Uh, I like to put a little silicone on these, and then slap them down, and then screw them in.